Hello everyone and welcome back to the Spiegel Mom Scraps YouTube channel. It's Caitlin here with another process video. Don't forget to use my code Caitlin15 for 15% 15 off your order in the Spiegel Mom Scraps shop. And be sure to check out the new sequin release before it sells out. They're absolutely beautiful and you need to check them out. And I'll have a link down below for that in case you're interested. Today I'm using some of my paper pads from my stash to showcase this photo of my boyfriend. Um, I took it while we were on a hike to one of the local waterfalls in New York state. Um, I'm using one of my new paper pads which is called Sweet Blooms and then an older paper pad called Sea Glass and both of these are from Craftsmith Company and they're available on like Amazon and um, at Michael's usually. So I've pulled out some papers and I'm using even some paper scraps from this collection uh, just to get some of those used up but I've got two collections I'm working with now and one photo. So what I decided to do is also pull out some of the other elements from these collections that coordinate that I have already, including some washi tape. But I didn't really have any idea of what I wanted to do. I didn't have like a sketch in mind or anything like that. But I knew I wanted to use a bunch of these cool papers that are like woodsy themed and outdoorsy themed and travel themed um, because I wanted this to have like a little travel layout um, theme. So I created a adorable border with that light brown wood grain panel color. And then I use the dark blue pattern, which is a beautiful leaf pattern, They're like all leaf impressions. It's really pretty um, to uh, be the main background paper. So now I'm going to gut this paper so I can use it um, in a later piece. But I actually don't end up using it the way I thought I was going to, so that was a little sad, but that's okay. And since I'm using a lot of different colors, I thought I was going to also use these die cuts, which are little frames. I thought they'd be super fun because they're like woodsy twine or not twine, like branches and leaves, you know, I thought that'd be cute, but I ended up not doing that. I did use washi tape on this layout. I used this one, which is from the Sea Glass Collection, which is by Craftsmith again, and I will be using that later on. So you can see that I'm starting to build up some layer here. So my photo is going to go on the left-hand side, where it is now under those other layers. Um, but I do go through a lot of my stash on this layout. This layout took me quite a while, but also has a lot of elements. So I think that's why it took me so long. Um, I'm usually a relatively quick scrapper. Um, I only take um, maybe 30 minutes to make it out, and this one was over an hour. Um, I did have to uh, stop and start a couple times because of errands and some things but um, I did finally get the layout finished and now I'm showing it with you guys today. So I did a little cut out of a little suitcase off of this um, pattern paper and I'm also layering it behind my photo. It's another cream based um, pattern with some nautical and travel items like designed on it. So I did a little tear edge on that bottom one which was really fun and I decided to take a little inspiration from Chamel. She usually inks her edges a lot, or she used to at least, and um, I decided to ink mine, and I'm using the twig color from Tim Holtz Distress Inks, which is uh, relatively new to me. I've used this a couple other times, this color, but since I've grown my collection of Distress Ink colors, it's really just hard for me to choose like which brown or which, you know, because they're pretty similar, um, but I thought this brown was good. It was a darker brown, and I wanted that harsher line on this masculine page. So that's one thing I like to do on masculine pages is harsher lines, uh, which is probably why I didn't go with the circles of twigs and leaves like I mentioned earlier, like I thought I was going to. I ended up going with these harsher lines with the ink bold on them. I did go through these die cuts, which are from Tim Holtz. These are the botanical die cuts. And what I ended up doing was going through all of them and only using one of them. Um, I like the vintage look of them, but they're just too, most of them are too big one. Uh, and a lot of them are too flowery and too colorful and I was looking for something more muted which there are muted ones in here they were just too big for what I wanted or they were butterflies and I didn't really want to do the butterfly thing on this layout so I didn't. So I'm going to put all of those back essentially but I pulled out one of these little itty bitty birds um, and this bird does come in multiple sizes which is nice. I like that about the die cut packs is you can get the same thing in multiple sizes which is really unique um, at least I think. So now I have a little cluster forming there to the right of my photo with a little suitcase and the little birds. And now I'm digging even deeper into my stash to find this, which is a bunch of old Tim Holtz papers. Um, I got racked these so long ago, and it was back when I did a lot more vintage work. Um, I don't do a lot of vintage stuff now, um, but on occasion I'll reach back in and get some. But these are some of the Tim Holtz papers. No idea what they're from. I got random pieces and bits and bobs. Um, and I thought about using that for my layering as well but I thought it gave the page too much uh, weight like it was becoming too dark and I still wanted this page to be light and adventurous um, so I didn't use any of those for this section 
And you guys might also notice that this is a longer video for me. I heard from you guys that you wanted to hear longer videos, so a little bit longer. I usually do 8 to 10 minute, but now I'm upping it to 15 so you can see things more in real time. Um, this is still four times fast. Like I said, this was a, an over an hour long layout for me. And I did cut out some pieces because they didn't uh, need to be in there. Like I waited to go get something and then took too long. Um, things like that I cut out, but I don't cut out most of the process. So I did pull out some chipboard pieces. And if you guys haven't heard, the Rediscover Your Stash uh, group has begun with Christina from Redefined to Creative and Sarah Scraps. And they're doing chipboard focus this month. So I pulled out some of my chipboard. I used three pieces on this layout. That's right, three pieces. And those are from the crepe paper uh, 12 by 12 sheet that I was just showing you there. Absolutely adorable. I got that from Studio Calico's Black Friday sale. And the one I'm putting at the top here says well traveled. And what I really loved about using these chipboard shapes, and while chipboard stands alone or stands fine on its own because it's a dimensional object, these ones were fairly plain. And I decided that I would highlight them with sequins, but I wanted to get everything glued down first. So you'll see me pulling my sequins here at the end. I even pulled in some magic mesh on this layout. Pretty fun. Um, if you don't know what that is, I don't know either. I just know that I have it. Um, I don't even have it in the original packaging anymore, but I do have it. And it's just like a self-sticking mesh material. I don't, I don't know, <laughs> but it's really fun. And I used some of that. And then there's some more washi tape, like I said I was going to use. But what I decided to do is lay all these items down and then I'll bring in my sequins at the end because I don't want to mess them up while they're drying. That's one of those things I tend to do with sequins and I don't notice till after I've done everything with the layout and I look at it again is that I touched a sequin while it was still drying and then it moves. Um, but that's because I use liquid adhesive. If you use glue dots, they won't move on you. Um, so that was my bad. I thought about bringing in this Pink Fresh Studio Boys Fort collection and I do use one element. It is from the uh, puffy sticker set and it's a little banner that says always. And another thing that I looked at were these pennants from that uh, Boys Fort collection. And I realized that all of them start on the left-hand side and there's none facing the right-hand side, which is all I wanted was one facing inward, you know, from the right-hand side, and they didn't have one, so that was awkward. So now I'm gluing down this cork piece that I had in my stash. I bought these from Michael's a little while, well, probably like two years ago now, but... I don't know what they're for, but I decided to use one. I thought it added another masculine touch. A lot of textures help add masculine touches um, to this layout. And mixed media is also a great way to do masculine layouts. I just didn't do any on this layout. I tend to avoid mixed media when I'm trying to do a multi-layered layout. So this one has a lot of paper layers, which means I usually don't do mixed media. But on my simpler layouts, I tend to do mixed media. So it really just depends on how I'm feeling. I pulled out two more puffy stickers from the Boys Fort collection from Pink Fresh Studio, and they're just little arrow pieces, which are really fun, and they're emphasizing um, some of the chipboard pieces. And then here's where I pull out another die set. This one's from Sizzix, and it's a little glow, but I was like, whoa, what if I made a sh shaker pocket out of this? And I didn't really think this through, and I've never used this die set before, so that didn't help either. So I figured I would cut the circle out and then cut the... Uh, little continents out which are North America and South America on this die set but then I realized that it cuts the circle and there's nowhere for me to enclose the sequins in and it was just an awkward mess but I'm showing it to you anyway because mistakes are fine and although a shaker pocket would have been really cool I did use the sequins in another cool way although let's face it a shaker globe would have been really really cool so if you guys have a globe stamp set that'd be a great idea maybe cut out one of the continents with an exacto knife or something like that another thing i could have done was just cut the continents out of a sheet of paper and then cut my own circle around it so it's a little bit larger but i didn't think of that until just now so maybe i'll try that again on another layout and if you guys would like to see me make some shaker layouts let me know i do have some more ideas I just didn't have uh, the right photos for it yet. That tends to be my problem when it comes to ideas is I don't have the right photo for it yet. Um, a lot of my designs are based off the photo or ideas I have for a specific photo that isn't printed yet, which tends to be the case always. So I'm pulling or I'm putting down these um, puffy stickers and now I'm pulling out some sequins. I'm using the Blue Moon and the Nature Walk sequins today. I almost didn't use any of the Nature Walk, but I did pull them in at the end because I thought a splash of green would be really cute. And so to accent these items that are on a dimensional, which I did put some foam adhesive underneath these uh, chipboard pieces, you'll see, 
I'm deciding to put some dark brown sequins. So I'm going to put a ring of dark brown, dark brown sequins from the New Moon Collect or Blue Moon. Man, my mouth is not working today. So you'll see me tuck those in all along there. I'm using my uh, tweezers and my Marvy Quick Pickup Stick, uh, which really help put them in place. And that's the first round. And then I decided, well, what if I put green ones? And I said, well, these browns don't really match, so I think I'm going to go back to the other brown. I'm actually looking through my other sequence sets. So what I decided to do is do some spaced out brown, and then I'm going to do some green after that. So I'm creating a radial effect from that element to give it, you know, its rightful place on the layout. It just brings more attention to it. And while this isn't my title, it does just add a lot of emphasis on it. And I like the emphasis on the clusters. Obviously, the emphasis is also on the photo, which you can do this around your photos, too. I've seen lots of um, beautiful sequin layouts that do the same radial effect around a photo. So here's where I'm going to put a foam square behind my little, uh, it says north, south, east, and west. Is that a compass rose, I think they're called? I'm putting that right there. And it's going to go to the left of my photo. And that's a very small cluster, but the sequins really help build it up. So you see I'm having trouble sticking it down, but I finally got it. And I'm going to do the same thing around that one. So I'm going to do brown sequins around the outside. And then I'm going to come back and put green sequins in. So the problem with this one is I laid out the sequins first to make sure they'd fit in the right order. Because with a smaller circle, I wasn't sure they'd fit nicely. And I couldn't just shove them anywhere because of the foam underneath. So then I went back and glued them down, which took a little bit more time. But it did end up working in the long run for my advantage. So right now, the title of this page is just Traveler. But I do plan on changing that. Um, I'm actually going to dig into my stash again and find some older products. I'm actually going to use some loose letters, which I know a lot of people don't have anymore. They've gotten rid of them, but I know a lot of us do have some loose letter alphabets in our stash. Mine happened to be from Freckles Fawn and their cork, which I thought was perfect because I needed another cork element on here because I have two at the moment. I have the top note shape at the top right, and then the chipboard piece on the left that's the compass rose has a cork finish to it. Um, so I will be bringing in another element of cork with the title, which you'll see later on. I also forgot that I went through almost all of my embellishments to try to find something else to put on this layout. Um, I didn't really need anything else, but I looked at some of my Cosmo Cricut stuff. Um, I had some camping stuff, which I thought might work, but it, it was just the wrong feel, if you know what I mean. It's more of a vintage -y feel, and this one has more of a fresh feel. Um, but I did add that Distress Ink, which gives it that vintage feel. I also thought that I was going to use some craft for my title, but none of these words seemed to fit very well. Um, I didn't have an idea for title at first. I knew I liked the, just like the little tag that says Traveler at the bottom, but what I ended up doing instead was actually uh, building off of that. So I pulled out these um, freckled fawn letters, and I thought I was going to put Amazing Traveler, Awesome Traveler, something adorable. I wanted something. Um, so after digging through, I was able to find the word Amazed. And to glue those down, I just use my liquid adhesive. Um, that's my glue of choice nowadays. Um, it's just my liquid fine line bottle's always there for me. And I definitely love the way it works. I do need to refill it though, so I gotta get on top of that. And I'm just gonna glue those down once they're kind of in position. And that little bird will sit on top of them. And I know this kind of covers that little suitcase I cut out, but it's okay. Um, I didn't have anywhere else to put it, so I had to go there. And then once we're done gluing that down, I'm going to go back and add some more sequins. Like I said, I like to let some of them dry and then come back um, just to make sure I don't mess any of them up. And I'm actually going to use the Nature Walk sequins uh, for those other radial elements. And here's where I'm putting in the little sequin uh, cl cluster down at the bottom. I just like to sprinkle some sequins all over my layout. It just helps bring your eye around when the sun catches them when you're looking at the layout, so it helps a lot. So you'll see me using my um, tweezers there. And I talk about these more in my um, June favorites video, which is on my personal channel. And my personal channel is always linked below if you guys would like to check it out. But that's pretty much it for this layout. I hope you guys enjoyed the close-up photos. Don't forget to use Caitlin15 for 15% 15 off your order. And definitely check out the new sequin mixes in the shop. They're absolutely adorable, and I can't wait to get mine. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!